Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be installing the T238 Bluetooth MOSFET. This is their version 2.0 and it's for the version 2 gearbox. Lots of twos and twos point oh's in the title. As you guys know, T238 has been in the MOSFET game for a little bit. They also make things like motors, tracers, and a number of other interesting items for the Airsoft game. The 2.0 MOSFET here has Bluetooth, has an app you can download on either an iPhone or an Android device, which is really, really neat. The Android devices take a little bit of extra work to get set up, but that's farther down the video. Um, the packaging, first of all, on this guy is actually really, really fantastic. This is the internal box. Uh, the external box mine came in with just like a regular, uh, actually larger version of this kind of cardboard box that had T238 written on it. Had this inside of it, and then it has a ton of foam packaging on the inside. So it is extremely well packaged, which is really, really nice. You never know uh, if these packages are going to get thrown around in the mail or not, so the more the better. The MOSFET itself is pretty typical looking. It sits inside of the gearbox, nothing external except for the wiring, which is kind of the way a lot of MOSFETs are going nowadays, which is really, really convenient. You don't have to worry about where you're going to put your MOSFET externally in your gearbox. It all sits right inside of it, which is fantastic. The version 2.0 MOSFET here does have a lot of the major features that people want nowadays. Major features like Active braking, which is completely tunable. Burst mode between three and six rounds, which is great. Uh, modes for AUGs, snipers, shot delays, pre-cocking, and all kinds of things like that. And the ever annoyingly popular binary trigger. What I love about this MOSFET is that it is completely digital. No micro switches, no mechanical moving components like that. It is all based on sensors that are infrared, so no moving mechanical parts that can break like that. Now, this is intended for both airsoft and gel blasters, or gel ball as a lot of people call it. Uh, so there are some little extra wires sticking off of here. I'm gonna end up removing those. Uh, I'm strictly an airsofter, and unfortunately, gel ball is not terribly popular in the US currently. I know outside of the US, it's much more popular because of various laws in some countries. Uh, but in this country, it's still very up and coming. I've seen maybe one or two actually in, real, in, in person. They're not terribly common yet. So, but this is, thankfully usable in both and it provides the hardware to run your auto loading system uh, to my knowledge t238 is the only company that does that now before we get to the tech table and install this let's talk about everything it comes with it's not a whole lot so let's be a really quick list you get a list of warnings so keep an eye out for these a fairly decent instruction manual keep in mind it is missing several pretty key steps to get the mosfet set up working properly uh, so i will post a link in the description to the more comprehensive installation manual that t238 offers or you can scan this little guy on the back of the instruction manual. Comes with all your setup hardware, a couple of stickers that are catching hairs that go on the front of the back of the MOSFET so it doesn't have any issues with shorting inside of your gearbox. A little bag of uh, just make, not any components you really need, stickers for your selector plate, uh, components for your auto-loading gel blaster system, and a pair of mini Tamiya connectors, as well as some heat shrink. I'm a Dean's guy, I've got some spares of those, so I'm going to install those too. Your connectors aren't installed in this MOSFET, so you do either have to crimp some pins on or solder a connector on, one or the other. And lastly, I really enjoy these, a little PVC patch. The PVC ones are awesome, they're durable, and this one's pretty small so I could stick it on a jacket or a vest. Really, really enjoy these. All right, the gun we're gonna be installing the T238 MOSFET in today is my LCT G3 SG1. We'll be installing the T238 MOSFET today into an LCT G3 SG1 gearbox. I picked this gun and this gearbox for a couple of reasons. One, I haven't really done hardly anything to the gun and I wanted to do something fairly special to it. I had a basic MOSFET in there before, but it wasn't anything crazy, just a really simple switch essentially. And two, because the gearbox is pretty plain. No fancy bells or whistles, not really anything done to it. As mentioned before, because this is going in an airsoft gun, I don't need the auto feeding leads for the gel ball magazine. So I went ahead and snipped these wires here. You can definitely unsolder these, but because this is soldered directly onto the board in a place where the signal wire needs to go, I didn't want to mess with that. I've had interesting experience before doing that, so I went ahead and just snipped it. Shouldn't be a big deal. And this guy up here is snipped as well. There are several steps we need to take to prepare the MOSFET for actual installation here. First one is we're going to install these little pieces of foam on the pins here. I find this kind of interesting. Honestly, I think it's for insulation, but uh, this is a new one. So uh, they're going to go on the outermost pin of these two and this pin right here, just like 
that. These stickers are clear, as you can tell, so they blend in fairly well with the MOSFET itself. And then the other sticker will go right around here on the opposite side, the bottom of the MOSFET. The wiring placement can be a little bit tricky, but once you get the board installed, it's pretty straightforward. You got a black wire running down the front here, red wire running down the back, and then another black wire running out the back. Red and black go to your battery out back, of course, and red and black down below go to your motor. The interesting part is making sure that the five sensors that are for the trigger here are not covered up. It's a little bit tough seeing as both of these are about 16 gauge wire. They're fairly stiff, so feeding them right there, making sure there's plenty of room for the trigger where it sits here, can get a little bit interesting. Just be careful when installing this. Obviously there are no mechanical moving parts, but it is still a circuit board with little pins and all kinds of little things on there, so be pretty careful when installing this. Also, the screw goes right here. That's where your cutoff lever or yaw control would be. So go ahead and use that same screw. The install instructions do call for using this little rubber gasket here. It tends to kind of flatten out, so I'm not a big fan of it. And also there aren't any metal components or anything that can short by touching this screw around it. So I'm not terribly concerned by just using the screw. The last thing we'll be installing after the gearbox is closed up is the selector plate. The reason we can do that after the gearbox is closed up is because we've removed the mechanical safety and the cutoff lever. So that way this can just slide into place and we don't have to do it while the gearbox is opened up. Something I found really interesting, and this is totally on the LCT G3, is that the selector plate is pretty unique, which is uh, not going to lend itself to the functionality of the T238 MOSFET, unfortunately. It apparently does not move as far back and forth as needed for the sensors to trip. So unfortunately, in this one particular gun that I happened to pick to install this MOSFET in, I can only get two selector modes instead of three. So if I have the system on safe, it'll be on semi. If I have it on semi, it's semi. If I have it on full auto, it's full auto. So unfortunately, I'm losing a selector setting by having picked this gun to do this review with, which is unfortunate. It did take about an hour and a half to actually come to this conclusion. So it took a little bit of doing. Uh, some explanation on what I've done to the selector plate on this gun. Being a white selector plate, I did notice that every once in a while, for some reason, the IR sensors on the outside of the MOSFET here would uh, trip, essentially, and change selector modes. And I, I guess there's some reflection off of this being white would be my guess. So I took a permanent marker and made the section that goes over the sensors black. And on top of that, I used a sticker that I had from a different kit. that had a little more surface area there and put it in the best spot I could find roughly in this little area for this gun uh, to trip between semi and full auto. So it works, but unfortunately I'm only gonna have two selector settings, which is still plenty to demo this MOSFET with though. When you're reassembling your gearbox, definitely make sure there's clearance for these wires here for the motor to go through. If there isn't, unfortunately, if you take your motor out, you can definitely damage those wires. So it's a little prevention there. It'll save you a headache later on. Let's talk a little bit about the DTU app here. It's a little bit interesting. I believe it's on the Apple Store, if I'm not mistaken. I'm an Android guy. This is an S22 from Samsung. So I'll be demoing the app on an Android device here, not a Mac device or Apple device, unfortunately. You can download the app and all the tutorial stuff from the QR code on the back of the instructions, as mentioned earlier. It is not on the App Store, unfortunately, for Android. I believe it is for the, uh, the Apple Store, which is a little convenient. It takes a little bit of doing to install it on an Android phone. So it's not super, super easy, but definitely very doable. You do download the .apk file. You go find that in your files. It's not too difficult to set up. You click on it. It probably is going to need some permissions. You install it. I did have to actually go into the app settings on my phone and give it permission to access the location via the app. It's a little bit interesting, otherwise it would not find my MOSFET via Bluetooth. It can be a little bit difficult to set up the app, but when everything's said and done, it is pretty smooth going. First of all, let's go ahead and turn on our device location and Bluetooth. The app's going to need both of those to actually interface with your gun. Once those are both turned on, you've got a search option here. I'm going to hit that. It's not going to find anything but just basically Bluetooth devices that are near me. Now we can plug the battery into our gun. We're gonna get a beep from the motor there so we know it's been plugged in. I'm gonna hit refresh here and it's gonna bring up my T238 DTU here. 
and it's been connected successfully. It's pretty fast and I've had actually no issues connecting it once I turned on my location permissions. So that's been really, really nice. Keep in mind that once you plug your battery in, you do have only 30 seconds to hook up Bluetooth before it's disabled and you have to unplug your battery and plug it back in once more. Let's check out the stock settings on this gun. I'm gonna go to basic DTU settings here. I'll just go through the settings one by one here. There's actually quite a bit in this app and a lot of it I don't feel like I'm gonna really use a whole lot, but I'll try to go through it as best I can. I do have a low power setting here. It gives you options for a 7.4, 11.1, or interestingly enough, a 9.6 volt, which I assume is a NIM or NICAD battery. I'm gonna go with 11.1 because I've got a little 1000 milliamp hour 11.1 hooked up on this. It gives us options for safe, semi, and full auto. I mentioned earlier that unfortunately I do not get a safe mode in this particular gun, but we can still look at it anyway. All these settings are for the version two gearbox because on a version three, you do get a mechanical safety there. Unless you take that out, you essentially have a mechanical locked safety. You can totally take it out, but unfortunately on the app, it doesn't allow for a setting on the version three gearbox on the safe mode. But on the version two like this, we do get that option. So it's got safe, semi, binary, and two through, or three through six round burst. On the semi mode, which is our second setting, we got semi, binary, which is kind of all the rage nowadays, which is annoyingly, annoyingly true, and three through six round burst once again. And full auto, we've got full, semi, and three through six round burst. Interestingly, we don't get a binary option on full auto. Our firing interval, I have that disabled, but it can go anywhere from half a second all the way up to three seconds. So if you've got like a DMR set of rules and you've got to wait two seconds between your DMR shots, you can set that programmatically in this. My trigger is pretty normal, but you can set it to sensitive, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. And it always says progress successful up there, which is kind of nice. And the other setting there was AUG firing. So that is like half pull and full pull, which is kind of interesting. You can check, check uh, which gun type if it's a version three. I think it'd be cool if they put uh, version three in parentheses there between the G36 and AK, just to be specific, kind of like they did with the, the semi and safe up there. Uh, this app, to my understanding, is also open source on GitHub, so it's probably not too difficult to make that change and you might have to make a build, but other than that, it would be totally doable. Uh, auto loading, uh, this is strictly for gel blasters, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, gel ball only there. Uh, it's three seconds all the way down to half a second. So you can actually uh, limit your loading there, which is very interesting. And we can check whether this is a DSG or non-DSG. Obviously, this is a longer barrel gun, so we're going non-DSG there. And you've got options to reset all these or load a program. We've got our trigger mode, full low pulse, full high pulse, current pulse, pre-cocking. Uh, interesting feature, but I can't say I use it a whole lot. It goes from zero to 255, so we actually got a huge range of settings there, which is pretty nice. Rate of fire, so if I wanna drop the rate of fire a little bit, I can totally do that, but right now it's set to the, basically the highest rate of fire the battery or motor will allow. Active braking is set to full. I'm gonna drop that to, let's say 60% there. Uh, electronic fuse is set to 100. I'm gonna drop that to 60 as well. A couple of these settings I might have to read up on. I'm not terribly well versed in them, but the magazine capacity is pretty straightforward. You can go from zero to 255. So if I want to have a 30 round magazine cut off there, I can totally do that. Look at my gearbox stats here. I haven't fired a whole lot of rounds on this gearbox yet with this MOSFET. This is absolutely testing right now. Uh, shot counter is pretty low, 15. Uh, I can refresh that. Power up time has been about eight minutes here. I just plugged it in. And average rate of fire, 131 rounds per second. Dang, that's fast. This is an interesting section here where I can actually check all the sensors and whatnot and see if they're actually functional. You can read through the green text there if you want to, but essentially what is happening is this is like a test mode to see if you're hitting various sensors. There are five trigger sensors, your gear sensor for the sector gear, and your full and semi-auto sensor on the side where this electro plate sits. You can check your voltage, current, and temperature as well, which is really convenient. And then we've also got our extended port information. This is strictly for gel ball. We've also got our ops report section here. We've got our input voltage, min and max voltage. Motor current draws about a little over 20 amps. Average semi-auto current and average full auto current. Full auto tends to be a little bit less there, it looks like. MOSFET temperature is roughly 30 C. Uh, I wish there was a way to put this into Fahrenheit because I'm in the US and I'm a Fahrenheit guy. So Celsius or centigrade is a little bit different to read for us in the US here. 
uh, my battery report here. It's using a LiPo, a lithium polymer voltage. Although it's 11.1 .1 volt, they tend to put out a little bit more and it's almost 90% charged. I've charged this battery once and I've actually never used it in a, in a real air south setting. Maybe I'll have to do that one of these days. So right now it's just kind of a little test battery. Device information gives you your ID information and your software version. So the software on this gun is about two years old. We got my mobile parameter set here. Uh, if I want to put in a password or change these settings, I can absolutely do that and name my device also. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and call it Kilo23, so why not? And there's finally a command terminal, the very last option there. I'd imagine there are specific command functions built into the MOSFET you can fire from here, possibly for testing or development would be my guess. That's pretty much everything from the app. It's a pretty decent comprehensive app, even though it's pretty plain looking as far as layout. And we've also got the about section here. User feedback, if you want to provide any, this is a version 0.6, not quite a version one yet. And you have about the company, which will take you to the t238.net website. Now let's go ahead and do some settings on here. I use my semi-auto. I'm going to give that a binary option. My full auto. Let's do a four round burst, something different. Uh, firing interval, I'm going to keep that disabled. That one's pretty straightforward. I'm going to set that to a sensitive trigger. Those don't matter. And that looks good. Close the app there by accident, hit that back button twice without meaning to. Let's see, let's give it a little bit of pre-cocking. I'll set it to just under 60 there. Uh, rate of fire I'm going to keep because I want to actually see how fast this motor spins on an 11.1. Uh, active braking, turn it down a little bit less and save the fuse there. And I think I'm going to call that good. All right, let's go ahead and test out those settings. Right now I've got it on semi, which is going to be my binary. And the pre-cockings turn on a little bit there. We can kind of see that through the port on the top of the gearbox. You can go crazy with it if you want to, but essentially you pull the trigger, it cycles. You let off the trigger and it cycles. Let's see how sensitive the trigger is with a sensitive setting. So not too long of a pull. And it's a pretty long trigger pull on this particular gun, so you get about maybe three or four millimeters of take up, but that's also mechanically tunable depending on your gun. Let's go ahead and go ahead and to full auto. This will be a four round burst. Keep in mind that pre-cocking is not functional on full auto setting or burst fire it looks like. The T238 Bluetooth 2.0 version two MOSFET, that is an interesting name when you got the version two of a MOSFET and it's for the version two gearbox. It's kind of confusing, but anyway, this has been a pretty good MOSFET. I actually really enjoyed setting this up. It was a little interesting to set up for the first time and kind of get everything installed and tuned and set up the correct way. But once you set it up once, doing further MOSFETs really is not terribly difficult or tricky. And I actually found the app to be really user friendly and connected immediately and very consistently after I got all the permissions set up on my phone. If the app ever makes its way to the Google Play Store, I'm sure the user permission settings will probably be set up right away doing that. I'll leave a link in the description for purchasing this on T238's website, of course, as well as links to the app and the instructions for setting the whole thing up. Thank you, T238, for sending this out. It was a really interesting experience. It is a little bit different from other MOSFETs and apps, mainly because the app I actually found is open source, it seems like, and it does have a little bit of maybe expandability, possibly, command terminal options, and all kinds of things like that. So it's a little bit more open than other apps and MOSFETs out there, which is very, very interesting. As a software engineer myself, that is really, really cool to see. It was not too difficult to set it up in the gun, and it was really straightforward. Can't complain. The price seems pretty reasonable on it. And it's got all the settings I could really ask for and it performs very, very well so far. Thanks for watching guys. It's always fun to review MOSFETs. I'm hoping to bring some more to you in the moderately near future. Take care, take it easy, and survive the crazy world out there.